Today's case brings us to Ireland and to the county Limerick. A city with a great diversity of people, with medieval castles and churches that give the city a grand feeling, all while the pubs crawl with locals and students, all craving one more pint of Guinness. In 2008, Limerick had seven homicides per 100,000 people, making it the murder capital of Western Europe overtaking Glasgow with five murders for every 100,000 people. However, as of 2022, these rates have dropped significantly. Limerick is a beautiful city, and as it is with any other city, it is the minority that lets the name down. We will return to Limerick, but first we will get into the life of Sylvia Roach Kelly. A mother of two young children, a 14 year old boy with autism and a 4 year old daughter. She was married to her husband Larkin Roach Kelly and they had set up a nice home for themselves in the County Clare. Unfortunately things didn't work out for the couple and they separated. However they continued to co-parent and they done anything they could for their children. Sylvia was a talented artist and one of her dreams while growing up was to open an art gallery and this is exactly what she did. During the year of 2005, Sylvia opened up the art gallery she always dreamed of and it was running really well for the first two years, then it eventually closed down. This was due to the fact that the art gallery was too expensive to run. Overheads and rent were going up, while paintings were getting sold, just not at the rate she wanted, or needed. Sylvia then ran into some financial pressure when the gallery closed. She then set up her own gallery from the family home, and this was to overcome the financial pressure. And as a bonus to this, she got to spend more time with her children. On December 7, 2007, it was a Friday night, Christmas season was starting to kick off. There was many war Christmas parties and old friends meeting up for a Christmas drink. Sylvia was just turning 33 years old, so she wanted to celebrate. She wanted to go into Limerick City with a few close friends and some family. Sylvia knew Limerick City well and she was out in the city many times before. Sylvia, her sister and some of her friends went on a pub crawl along the main street of Limerick that night, enjoying themselves with the drinks and laughter flowing and with a Christmas spirit in the air. They decided to finish off the night in Ted's nightclub and they were there until the small hours of the morning. And this is where Sylvia met a 23-year-old man named Jerry McGrath. Jerry was also out with a friend of his. They danced, talked and had a few drinks together. And they were enjoying each other's company. Jerry was from County Tipperary, which is about an hour and a half away from Limerick. He booked himself a room in the Clarion Hotel for the night, as he lived far enough away and it would have been too late to go home. As the pair made a good connection, Jerry invited Sylvia back to his hotel room to finish off the night in private. And Sylvia happily accepted his invite, and off they went back to the hotel room in the Clarion Hotel. CCTV would capture them as they walked hand in hand on their way to the hotel. And the next morning came around, it was time for people to check out of the hotel. The hotel cleaners were knocking on all the hotel rooms to inform them it was time to check out so they could clean the rooms before the next turnaround of people staying at the hotel. When they arrived to the room Jerry stayed in, they knocked and there was no answer back. So they thought it was unoccupied. They started to clean up they began in the room, making the bed 
and clearing up empty bottles from the night previous. When they finished here, they made their way into the bathroom. They turned to the bathtub and they found a lifeless woman face down in the bathtub, not wearing any clothes. The Guardi were then quickly called and an investigation began. The Guardi were able to identify the woman and it was Sylvia. At this point, her family and friends, they were already ringing and texting her phone to see how she was and why she wasn't answering or texting back, which was very out of character. But they thought she was just sleeping in after her night out. But what they found out was just as shocking as it was horrifying. An autopsy took place on Sylvie's body and it concluded Sylvia died a violent death. She had severe bruising on her upper body, including her head and her face, and she was then strangled to death. And the investigation into the murder of Sylvia Roach Kelly began. Forensics were called to the scene, and they were able to obtain DNA from Sylvia's body. And from this DNA, they were able to determine she had a sexual encounter on the night of her death. So the police then had to determine who the person was she had this encounter with and where was this person. They then got the list of guests who were staying at the Clarion Hotel that night and they found the name of a man who checked in under the room number Sylvia's body was found and the name used for the hotel room was Jerry McGrath, the man Sylvia left the nightclub with. The hotel staff stated he never checked out that morning, and the guardy then checked the CCTV footage to try and track down the movements of Jerry. And while they were reviewing the CCTV, they found Jerry leaving the hotel in the early hours of the morning. The guardy then scurried to gather information on Jerry's whereabouts. They contacted Jerry's family and they cooperated with the Gardaí. It was determined through talking with Jerry's family he had booked a last minute trip to England. The Gardaí then got in touch with Jerry's family in England and they informed investigators of Jerry's whereabouts. He was then arrested and brought back to Ireland. When in Ireland he was questioned and charged with the murder of Sylvia Roach Kelly. And the events of the night Sylvia died would unravel. Sylvia had said something to Jerry that enraged him. He beat her, strangled her, and then dragged her face down into the bathtub and left her there to die. When the guardy went digging into the background of Jerry McGrath, they would find some of his previous crimes which were very unnerving to say the least. In April of 2007, a female taxi driver named Mary Lynch was brutally attacked by Jerry. She said Jerry got into her car and he guided her down to a dead end. He then got out of the car and he went around to the driver's window and was about to pay his taxi fare. And this is when, out of nowhere, he attacked Mary. And Mary had a can of deodorant in her car, and it was at arm's reach. So she grabbed the deodorant and sprayed it into Jerry's eyes. And she eventually got away from Jerry and went to the hospital for treatment. Jerry was then arrested, and he was released on bail. On October 7th, at 3.30 a.m., Another terrifying attack occurred, and at the hands of Jerry. He broke into a house in County Tipperary. He then came across a five-year-old girl sleeping in her bed. He then woke her up and put his hands over her mouth, and guided her out of the room and down the stairs, while also holding her neck and squeezing very tightly. 
he tried leading her out the front door, but the door was thankfully locked. Her dad heard this, and he ran down the stairs and cornered Jerry in the kitchen. Protecting his daughter, he managed to outpower him and hold him down until the guardie arrived. After the attack, the little girl had burst blood vessels in her face as a result of being choked by Jerry. What must have been going through this little girl's mind at this time. Being woken up by a strange man in the safety of her own house. Thank God the dad was there. And yet again, Jerry McGraw was let out on bail on October 30th, 2007. At Limerick District Court. For charges of false imprisonment of a child. The Gardaí stated their concern on letting a man like Jerry out to the public. But the judge overruled this and he went ahead by giving Jerry bail. And not five weeks later, Sylvia Kelly was murdered at the hands of this monster of a person. In the trial for the murder of Sylvia Kelly, Jerry was given a life sentence and there was an additional nine months for the assault on Mary the taxi driver. Statements from Sylvia's parents and former husband were read out at the trial. Esther and John Burke said they couldn't begin to explain their suffering and pain at the loss of their daughter Sylvia. Esther said and I quote, I wish I could hold her in my arms again and tell her I love her, end quote. Lark and Kelly which was Sylvia's former husband, had to explain to their children that their mommy was dead and they would never see her again. After the trial, Larkin publicly stated, by twice granting bail to this extremely dangerous person, the state gave him freedom, which he used as an opportunity to murder Sylvia. This is a failure to our justice system and it is a failure to our kids who have lost their mom. And in 2010, Larkin issued legal proceedings against the state on behalf of his children, claiming he should have not been granted bail as he was a significant threat to the public. The law permits judges to refuse bail to persons who they think will become involved in serious crimes. However, judges are reluctant to refuse bail as people are innocent until proven guilty. And the length of time from the crime and when the trial begins could be at least two years, which is a lot of time. By granting bail to these criminals, the courts are easily enabling witnesses in the trial to be intimidated in the future, not to mention they are free to walk the streets again and mingle with innocent civilians. There was a report made by Mr Justice Kevin O'Higgins and this identified the many problems with the Guardian management in the Cavan and Monaghan division in 2007 and 2008. This division handled the case of Sylvia Roach Kelly. Sylvia's case was put forward and it examined allegations of Garda malpractice. It was then found Garda had objected against the bail being granted by a violent offender, which was Jerry McGrath. The report found issues in the case, but they could not position any blame on the death of Sylvia Roche Kelly to any member of the Garda. And this report led to the resignation of the Minister for Justice and the early retirement of the Garda Commissioner at the time. While this is a result for the Sylvia family, it won't bring her daughters back their mother. A woman out enjoying her birthday with family and friends, murdered by a man who was let out on bail for attempting to abduct a child. And not five days later, he would kill Sylvia. She was let down by Ireland's justice system. And now her daughters have to grow up without Sylvia in their lives. Sylvia will live on through her daughters and she will remain in the memories of her family and friends. Thank you for watching. 
I will see you in the next one.